Hello, and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at an introduction to logarithms. Before we actually start with logarithms, we're going to talk about exponential functions. So an exponential function is of the form y equals b to the x, where b is greater than 0 and not equal to 1. So the inverse would be, remember the inverse of an equation, that's when you switch x and y, it would be x equals b to the y. But remember, when we write uh, the inverse of a function, we want to get y by itself. So how do we get y out of the exponent? It's kind of stuck up there. There's nothing we can do. We can't multiply both sides by y. That's not going to get y out of the exponent. We can't take the yth power of both sides because that's still, well, we might get it out of the exponent, but then we have an index of y, which doesn't help either. So this is why we have this thing called the logarithmic function. And the logarithmic function would say that we can get y out of the exponent by writing it as y equals log base b of x. So it's read y is the logarithm to the base b of x. So x equals b to the y is the same as y equals log base b of x. And we think of y as the power we have to raise b to in order to get x. Now one note about this, I'm going to do an example in just a second, but one note about this is that the y, the log, and the x are all the same size. They're all the normal size. And then there's a subscript of b. So b is a little subscript, which is indicating the base of the logarithm. Okay, so just one example. If we have 4, let's not do 4, just kidding. Let's do um, 8 equals 2 to the third. So in exponential form, 8 equals 2 to the third. I think we can all agree that 8 is the third power of 2. If we were to rewrite this in logarithmic form, so remember what it is. So we would say the x now is part of the logarithm. The base is part of the logarithm. So 8 and x are, are on the same side now, the, the base and the x. And then the exponent is on the other side. So in logarithmic form, this would be 3 equals log base 2 of 8. So the y, the thing that's all by itself, that is the power. That is the exponent. So sometimes we say logarithms are exponents, and that's exactly why. Let's look at some equivalent statements just to get used to logarithmic form, because if you're not used to it, it can be a little bit weird. So these are all facts. 16 does equal 2 to the fourth. In logarithmic form, we would say log, and then this is base 2, because 2 is the base of this exponential. Then we put the answer, and then we say it equals the exponent. So log base 2 of 16 is equal to 4. Next, we can all agree that 9 equals 3 squared. And if we were going to write this in logarithmic form, we would say log of the base, the base is 3, of the answer equals the exponent. So the, the equal side is always the exponent, which is a little bit weird. Okay, this time we're given uh, an equation in logarithmic form. Log base 5 of 1 25th is equal to negative 2. So if we were going to put it in exponential form, I'm actually going to write it the other way where I have the exponent on the left, unlike what is shown um, already here. So I'm going to say the base 5 raised to the exponent, negative 2, is equal to 1 over 25. And lastly, we have log base 2 of 1 8th is equal to negative 3. So this is going to be the base 2 raised to the exponent, negative 3, is equal to 1 8th. So this is just getting used to going between exponential form and logarithmic form. Now we're going to solve a whole bunch of logarithmic equations so that this is no longer a new concept to you and instead you're like, oh no, not another logarithm. I've done so many of these and I know it so well now. So our first example, we have log base 7 of x is equal to 2 and we want to figure out what is the value of x. One strategy is to take the logarithmic equation and put it in, back into exponential form. So it might be helpful until you remember this, that log base b of x is equal to y. This is equivalent. This is the same thing as saying b to the y is equal to x. So you want to know this, cherish this, be able to go between exponential form and logarithmic form. And let's see, so we would say the base raised to the exponent is equal to x. And now all of a sudden this problem isn't that scary. 7 squared is equal to x. Well, 7 squared, that's 49. So 49 is equal to x. And again, if we plug this in, if we plug in 49 right here, 
This is saying 7 to the second is 49, which I think we can all agree is true. Okay, this time we're going to solve for m. So again, we want to we want to remember that thing that if we have log base b of x equals y, we can always rewrite that logarithmic equation as the base to the exponent equals x. And x has a special name. It's actually called an argument. So we would say the base to the exponent equals the argument. Okay, so we're going to rewrite this. 2 to the m is equal to 1 8. All right, this one's a little bit trickier because now m is the exponent, which isn't all that helpful. There's some strategies that we can do here. Um, one is the idea that uh, if we have the same base and we have an equation, then the two exponents must be equal to each other. So if I have um, b to the, let's use uh, m, equals b to the n, so we, if we have the same base and we know that this is true, then this indicates to us that the exponents must be equal to each other, then m must be equal to n. So that's all fine and dandy, but 2 and 1 8 are not the same base, so we can't apply this, this wonderful strategy yet. But I think it is possible to write 1 8 as a power of 2. For starters, let's get out of fractional form. So if we want to force a reciprocal, we would raise it to a negative power. So 1 8 is the same as 8 to the negative 1. And then you might recall from the, I think it was the previous slide, no, nope, two slides ago. Oh, the answer is right there. Huh. We'll pretend like we didn't just see that. Um, you might recall that 8 is the third power of 2. So we can rewrite 8 as 2 cubed to the negative 1. So this is still 1 8. We have here's the 8, and here's that reciprocal of 8 giving us the 1 8. And lo and behold, we have the same base. Now, I don't want the, the parentheses here, so I'm going to use power to a power, which indicates I need to multiply. So that would be 2 to the negative third. Now I have the same base. And if this is a true equation, then the exponents must be equal to each other, meaning m must equal negative 3. And we can confirm right here that we should have a negative 3 right there where we had that m. So it does work. This one was a little bit trickier. I apologize about that. Let's see if we have a better one. Nope. <laughs> For this one, so again, what's that thing we want to remember? Say it with me. Log base b of x is equal to y is an equivalent equation to b to the y equals x. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to say take our base a, raise it to the third power, equals 6. Now if we want to get a by itself and it's being raised to the third power, we need to take the cubed root. So I'm going to take the cubed root of a and the cubed root of 6, letting me know that a is equal to the cubed root of 6. Cubed root of 6 is something irrational, so we'll leave it just like that. All right, an example that's hopefully a little bit nicer, especially from two times ago. But before we get to that, we're going to remember log base b of x equals y is an equivalent equation to b to the y equals x. You have to know this, love it, cherish it, remember it, know it, love it, can't emphasize that enough. Know this. Okay. Back to this, so we're going to say the base is 3, the exponent is y, and the argument is 81. Okay, I'm going to write it down here since that's being weird. Nope, that's being weird too. Um, so in this case, again, the exponent is the variable, which isn't that helpful. But perhaps we have a strategy because maybe 81 is a power of 3, which it is. Uh, 81 is the fourth power of 3, so I can rewrite 81 81 is the same as 3 to the 4th. So I'm going to replace 81 with 3 to the 4th, giving me the same base. Now we can just set the exponents equal to each other, and we end up with y equals 4. And we can always check this by plugging in over here and putting the 4 there. This would tell us 3 to the 4th equals 81, which is exactly what we said right there. Okay, in this example, we have log base 2 of t is equal to negative 2. All right. Let's write this again. Log base b of x is equal to y is equivalent to b to the y is equal to x. So this is saying 2 to the negative 2 is equal to t. Oh, this is a nice one because we don't have to do any weird change of base or anything. 2 to the negative 2, the negative indicates to us take the reciprocal. The reciprocal would be 1 half and 1 half squared 
is one fourth. So we end up, I don't know why I just put one fourth in parentheses, that was weird. So we end up with one fourth is equal to t. In another example, we have, so we have log base b of x is equal to y is equivalent to b to the y equals x. This would give us 4 to the j is equal to 2. All right, so this one's a little bit interesting. Um, we want to, I think we want to have the same base because we do have the variable and the exponent. And we can do that because we know that 4 is a power of 2. So 4 is equal to 2 squared. So I'm going to use substitution to say 2 squared to the j is equal to 2. And then this is power to a power, so we would multiply. That's 2 to the 2j equals 2. Now, we have the same base. We want to set the exponents equal to each other. But what's the exponent of the 2? Well, that would be 2 to the first power. Then we could say 2j is equal to 1, and therefore j is 1 half. Now, does that make sense? 4 to the 1 half equals 2? Absolutely, because raising something to the 1 half is taking the square root, and the square root of 4 is, in fact, 2. All right, we're going to switch gears here, and now we're going to look at simplifying logarithms. When we simplify logarithms, this is actually kind of nice. Um, so remember what this logarithm is. This is the base, so 2 to something, and this is, well, it's called the argument, but it's like this is the answer to the exponential uh expression. So 2 to what power gives us 16? And what we can do, if you don't like the unknown where we're not representing it, how do we represent an unknown? We give it a variable. So we temporarily take this expression and we turn it into an equation. And we can say log base 2 of 16 equals an unknown, which we can call x. Then we can put it in exponential form. Base to the power equals the argument. And now 2 to what power is 16? If you don't know off the top of your head, that's fine. Rewrite 16 as a power of 2. It's 2 to the 4th power. So we would have 2 to the x equals 2 to the 4th. Therefore, x must be 4. So log base 2 of 16 is equal to 4. In this example, we're asking ourselves, 3 raised to what power is 1 third? If you know it, you don't need to set up the equation. Maybe you already know how to get from 3 to 1 third. Otherwise, I suggest setting up that equation. Say this equals, we'll say y this time. So that would give us 3 to the y equals 1 third. Now you do have to, to get a little tricky here. How can you rewrite 1 third as a base 3? Well, remember, th 1 third is the reciprocal of 3. So we could rewrite 1 third as 3 to the negative 1. And then we have 3 to the y equals 3 to the negative 1. Therefore, y must equal negative 1. So this expression simplifies to negative 1. Here we have log base 6 of 6. So 6, again, what this is basically asking is 6 raised to what power is 6? And the answer here, 1, right? 6 raised to the first power is 1. If we look at this, this would be 6 to the 1 equals 6. The story checks out. If you don't like that, of course, set it equal to x, and then what, you, what would happen? If we said log base 6 of 6 equals x, you would have 6 to the x equals 6, and then you would still have to think about that. Or you could say, well, if I have just a base with no exponent, the identity is 1, and then you would end up with x equals 1, which is what we got up here. This, when we have log base b of b, this is considered one of the identities. So it's good to know log base b of b is equal to 1. This is one of the logarithmic identities. Logarithmic identity. So that's a good one to know. Another good one to know is this. While it's not an identity, it is good to know. So this is asking us 8 raised to what power equals 1? So what is it that we can raise 8 to that would give us 1? And that would be 8 to the power of 0. Right? If we have 8 to something, put a question mark, equals 1, that has to be zero. So this would end up being zero. That's another good one to know. If the argument is one, then the exponent had to have been zero. This has been a lesson on the introduction to logarithms. Thank you for stopping by.